Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the status report highlight for the 22nd of May 2018. And following the 0.63 stress test weekend, we are back with the new issue of our bi-weekly status report. Today, Eugene looks back at the first results from the weekend, Peter talks about missing visual indicators in the current stress test builds, and Victor gives a glimpse into the progress of the animation team. And the community spotlight is defined by your first reactions to 0.63. So let's dive straight in, starting with lead producer, Eugene. At first, I would like to thank you for the amazing participation during the weekend stress test. It has helped us identify a number of new issues that we are investigating as I write this. Let's take a closer look at some of those issues. Crashes and general game stability issues. There have been over 200 crashes altogether over the period of two days with a couple of different causes. Some of them are new, but most are known. Hopefully the amount of data generated will identify the pattern to replicating these issues internally and getting them fixed. Characters locked in database. Besides the stability issues, we are still tracking situations where a player character gets locked in a database. Although happening less often than previously, this is still a major problem that is most likely tied to a server client crash freeze not closing the connection gracefully, and not unlocking the character as intended. We have a possible fix for these outlier issues and crashes in our internal development branch of the game, and should roll these out in the next few stress tests. Basic Central Economy Balance there is an investigation ongoing into central economy loot distribution. Specifically, we're looking at cases where the intended gameplay loop is not properly supported by items presented spawned to players exploring even the most remote corners of Chernerus. The central economy is a complex system that controls the distribution of loot across Chernerus. It's supposed to sustain a barrage of ongoing player interaction on a given server, player picking up and dropping loot, taking it across to different servers. With the goal to keep the core gameplay loop during a gameplay session challenging, encouraging players to learn, and eventually master the survival in Day Z. At the same time though, it needs to be a fun gameplay mechanic. It's important to note that the stress tests are our first real opportunity to really see how the central economy behaves in 0.63, as we're just not able to internally reproduce the behavior of a large amount of players in the game. That ultimately puts us at the very beginning of all of the balancing. During stress tests, we are extracting economy states over periods of time to understand the player's movement and their interactions. This in turn helps us understand where our priorities should be within the spawning system. The second part of our loot basic survival mechanic problem is the character representation itself, meaning how healthy, hungry, thirsty your character is. That sets the pace to this core gameplay loop of keeping your character fed and alive. Any potential tweaking of character representation values depends on the findings of our loot distribution tests. We will have to cover a lot of possible border cases that happen to players. Additionally, we will, as previously suggested, also play around with the overall player numbers per server, and we will need to see how to scale the central economy with player numbers going up, possibly all the way to 100 players per server. It's going to be interesting to see how Daisy handles 100 players, not just for server performance reasons and things like that, but just having 100 players roaming the map. More interactions, less interactions, more KOS? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Still, it's going to be an experience either way. Now let's move on to lead designer Peter. In the last status report, I was commenting on the community feedback regarding firearms in our Daisy stress tests. Today I will continue with different elements which are related to them. Weapon switching animations. As is pretty obvious, the animation for swapping items from the inventory to the hand slot are missing, especially with weapons. This creates a gameplay problem, as a lack of visual communication turns a harmless disarmed character into a threat in a split second. Currently, we are implementing these item switch animations, and, along with them, we are changing one important thing. Shoulder slots will no longer be dedicated. That means you will be able to carry two long firearms or two melee weapons as needed, one on each shoulder, as we progress with 0.63. A slot for a bout will also be added, opening possibilities for an additional pistol holster. Ooh, I'm going to get my six-shooter in my hip holster and get some cowboy-style dueling at dawn. A knife sheath, a quiver, a slot for a bow is considered as well, but there needs to be a bow implemented first to see how it will work with non-dedicated shoulders. Hit feedback. Another part missing is animation feedback for a target being hit with a projectile. As we turned that specific feature off for the stress test, we ran into a problem where even additive impact affected the aim of a firearm. Such an authentic affair quickly becomes a very unpleasant mechanic, preventing a reaction by putting you in a disadvantage after being hit. The only chance was that the shooter will miss or have to reload so your aim can recover in the meantime. We will have to address this issue as we would like to have animated feedback following a projectile hit. On a different issue, bleeding and its treatment are basic daisy mechanics. Unfortunately, without the new parent-child hierarchy, which is being implemented as we speak, we cannot pin particle emitters to the character properly and animate them with it. 
We've decided to postpone the visual representation of bleeding particles as well. Admittedly, this is bad timing, as in 0.63, you have to treat every bleeding source individually with slightly unresponsive progress arrows of the blood stat icon. We will have more information about indicators later, and no way to tell if there are some bleeding wounds left. It's also hard to say how many times you should bandage. Apart from that, please be aware that many elements you see in the game right now have not been through a basic balance pass just yet. From digestion, regeneration speeds and stamina, through damages of melee and projectiles to the weight of items, their sizes and cargo spaces. It's safe to say that basically everything will be adjusted more or less, and it is connected to some degree with the lack of features, mechanics and content, which will be added down the road during the 0.63 experimental phase. Nice one Peter, at least we know that there is a lot of balancing to be done, so there's not too much worry in regards to some things maybe not working quite right, as there is a long way to go with balancing and tweaks and of course a lot of content to be added during the experimental phase. Really looking forward to it. Now let's move on to lead animator, Victor. The animation team is now focused on several parts of the player character. We are now in the phase of improving and finalizing the prone system. Animations for crawling in prone on the back, which have been missing until now, are being added. The cameras and some poses are not final yet as well, and of course, after the animations are finished, we will have to do a couple of rounds of bug fixing for prone on the back before we tick it off as done. Another important part that is in progress is overcoming obstacles. We now have a working prototype for jumping, but we are still in the process of adding missing animations. Meanwhile, there has been some work done on climbing over higher obstacles. These are divided into multiple levels, and different animations will be played depending on the height of the obstacle. Close combat will see some changes as well, as we want to have more variation to the combat. We are adding new animations for the baseball bat, which should better reflect the item. In the future, we want to continue with this and add more item-specific attack animations. Last but not least, there is ongoing work on firearms, vehicles, user actions, infected and also tons of general bug fixing. All of these areas are a longer-term task, but you should see constant improvements in the game with everything related during experimental. Thank you very much, Victor. And that is all for the status report highlight for the 22nd of May, 2018. Don't forget to check out the community spotlight down the bottom of the status report itself for all the juicy community-created content. <laughs> what? They added one of my videos. Check it out anyway. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button as it helps the channel out a lot. And I'll see you peeps next time.